You're listening to The Voluntary Life, where you can hear ideas for finding freedom in an unfree world. Visit thevoluntarylife.com to connect with the show and hear all past episodes. Here's your host, Jake. Hi, it's Jake here. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. This is an episode about the pros and cons of two different paths to entrepreneurship. I'm talking about being self-employed versus being a business owner. And I'd like to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of both those options. And to finish by talking about how difficult it is if you get stuck in between those two options and piles of money is to be clear about which one it is that you're pursuing. So this is just my opinion based on my own experience. I come from the business owner um, side of things. I developed and, and sold my own business, but I also have lots of friends who have pursued the freelance or self-employed route and got lots of benefits uh, out of that route too. So I think I've seen uh, the pros and cons of both sides And I do think there are advantages and disadvantages to both. But I'm also really interested to hear if you have different views about being self-employed versus being a business owner. So let me know what you think. So let's get started with, first of all, looking at um, self-employment. This is where you are selling your own time and keeping all of the uh, revenue from that and paying your own expenses but working as a freelancer or self-employed person for other people or companies. And this, I think, can be a really great choice if you have the right circumstances. The best circumstances I've seen for this is when you have a valuable skill and you also have good contact to customers or clients within your industry. For example, a friend of mine worked as a management consultant and knew a lot of people in his industry. He was able to go freelance or become a self-employed uh, consultant. And he knew a lot of people who, who valued his expertise and trusted him and were willing to employ him. And because he had such low overheads, no employees, no real fixed costs, um, he was able to charge a much uh, lower price than competing companies, but still to charge enough to make uh, a very healthy income for himself. And that enabled him in in that period of his life to uh, be a stay-at-home dad for the first uh, year and a half of his son's life. And it was a, a great opportunity, gave him a lot of free time. And that's one of the things I think can be a real advantage of going the freelance or self-employed route. You can typically um, earn a very good living but have a lot of flexibility in terms of your time. A lot of people who choose to go traveling or take time off um, are able to fund that through doing short bursts of kind of freelance work, self-employed work. The disadvantage of choosing this route is that you're still very much dependent on your work time for generating income. So you're not developing a business independent of yourself that has value in itself that you can potentially sell one day in the future or you can use for passive income in the future. So it provides a lot less opportunity for long-term financial freedom gives you a lot more freedom up front in terms of your time and flexibility but doesn't necessarily give you that long-term financial freedom that comes from developing a business the other downside i think to being freelance is that it can be hard to sustain over longer periods of time because those advantages that you have get worn away so for example Let's say that you uh, know a lot of people in your industry and you're able to quit your uh, employed job and go freelance. You still know these other people who will then employ you um, and therefore you don't have a lot of search costs of finding new customers. However, over time, those customers might no longer need your services and those initial customers can dry up and then you have to start spending money and time and effort in marketing yourself in finding customers that all takes time and expense and starts to erode away your very low cost uh, base that you have for being able to charge cost-effective fees but still make a lot of money yourself 
And also those valuable skills that you have, they can get eroded over time as well, um, which means that you may need to invest in other things to keep the value of your work up. So you may need to buy new software and new equipment and so forth. And again, that means that the benefit you have of having a very low cost footprint um, being able to earn a lot of money as a self-employed or freelancer is hard to sustain long term uh, and you get dragged more and more in towards kind of developing a business um, where you're employing people and inve investing in things and marketing and so forth, um, which you start to lose those, those benefits of the self-employed model. So that's the self-employed version of things. I think if you're going to do it, it can be great to take advantage for the period that you do have the opportunity to do so, but be careful that you're not developing a business without kind of realizing it and all of the risk and cost that goes with that. And be aware that it's not necessarily going to last forever. Um, it's a vulnerable uh, position to be in because it is so dependent on you. Plus, you have the other disadvantages of, you know, you, if you do become ill and so forth, you can't work and, and so forth. So all of the things that, that are associated with your income being dependent on your time. So what about being a business owner? Well, this is the, the route that I took, and this, I think, has the advantage that you are developing something of value itself, the business itself. The business has value because it generates income, and as an income-generating machine, you may be able to sell it in future to somebody else and realize the capital value of the business that you develop. Or you might be able to use it in future as a passive source of income if you're able to develop it to the point where you, you have other people running it for you and you can step away. And so being a business owner has a lot more potential long-term freedom, both in terms of financial freedom um, because of the value of the business and also in terms of freedom of your own time because you can potentially step away from the business in a way you can't if you're a freelancer or self-employed. And in order to take advantage of these potential benefits of being a business owner, a lot of people talk about how vital it is to plan from the very beginning to make the business independent of you. And I agree with this. This is an attitude that I had from the very beginning as well. And I found it very difficult, it, even, even though I was very consciously trying to do this, it's still very, very hard, but absolutely essential to work on the business rather than working in the business. And Michael Gerber, the, the author of uh, The E-Myth Revisited, has an interesting way of describing this mindset. He talks about adopting the approach that you're developing your business as a franchise prototype. Even if you never intend to franchise your business and you just you, that's not the route you're going to go, he still suggests that you work as if your business were to be a franchise prototype in that you develop all the systems and procedures and uh, kind of uh, standards and guidelines and everything so clearly that you could literally hand a sort of operations manual to a franchisee and they would be able to replicate your business. And the idea behind that is that in doing so, you're extracting yourself from the business and you're creating a revenue generating or value generating machine that you're able to step away from. In a way, your job as a business owner is from day one to be thinking about how you make yourself obsolete in the running of the business, how you get to a point where this is like a perpetual motion machine. It just goes on without you and is able to carry on generating uh, value without you. Another way of thinking about this that a couple of people talk about, I, I think that um, Tim Ferriss talks about this in The 4-Hour Workweek and also Derek Sivers in his book Anything You Want, is to think of developing the business in such a way that you're able to take six months to a year off and you would come back and your business would still be going even stronger than when you left it. If you're aiming towards doing that kind of thing, it will force you to put procedures in place to make the business independent of you. And the advantage there is, again, that you have that financial freedom and longer term time freedom to step away from your from your business 
There is a big downside um, up front compared to being a freelancer, and that is you have a significantly higher level of risk because typically developing a business as a business owner involves a lot more investment. So there's more financial risk involved. You are typically actually buying capital goods and software and hardware infrastructure and potentially hiring people and so forth. And not only that, but you also in the in the initial period, you have significantly less time. It's much more stressful than being a freelancer or self-employed person. For example, when I was setting up my business, um, at the same time as this friend of mine was able to uh, take it over a year out and be a stay-at-home dad with his son, I had very, very little free time or social life. I was just full-on dedicated to the business. And, and this is the experience of most people in that initial startup phase. Um, it's a lot more stressful, a lot more time-intensive, um, but you get the payoff later down the line because you, you create this value-producing um, machine, which you are then able to step away from. The worst thing, I think, is if you get stuck in between these two models, where you know, you're not getting the benefits of being a freelancer and not getting the benefits of being a business owner, um, but all of the stress that, invo- that is involved with both of them. And this can happen, I think, uh, to freelancers who stay freelancers for a long time and also to business owners who start a business but are very much invested in their own technical expertise and very much devoted to practicing their art if you like and the difficulty with that is that you start to take on all of the risk associated with owning a business so you start employing people and investing in things but you don't have the opportunity to step away from it later because everything is dependent on you and you're kind of deeply ingrained in the business and basically it doesn't work if you don't go into work. And that I think is the worst situation because you're not really creating a business for yourself, you're creating a job. And it's even worse than a normal job because it's a job that you can't stop, you can't step away from, you can't take time off from, and you have all these other people dependent on you and so forth. So that I I really think is worth being very careful about. If you're interested in entrepreneurship, it's a great opportunity to look at being either a business owner or to look at being a freelancer stroke uh, self-employed person. And, And each of those routes has its own benefits and its own disadvantages. But the worst, I think, is to get stuck in the middle and and not really get the best out of either route. So if you do find that you've started off as a freelancer and you're slowly morphing into maybe developing a business and you want to be a business owner, then hopefully this is something that can help you be very conscious about what you're trying to do and either go for it develop a business and, and you know create something that you can step away from or not um, but but not sort of take on all the risk without the benefit so to speak so I hope that's helpful I'd love to hear any thoughts that you have about this and any other advantages or disadvantages different options as you see it um, for getting the most freedom and opportunity that you can from being an entrepreneur and thank you so much for listening Thank you for listening to The Voluntary Life. If you have feedback about the show, please email jake at thevoluntarylife.com. If you enjoyed this program, please share the podcast with your friends or click the donate button on thevoluntarylife.com.